So this is the first of a three-part series on um, setting up a scene with a camera and um, composing that scene by using some of the camera tools. Then putting lights into the scene and lighting the scene you, to get a particular visual effect. And then finally using some materials. So the um, three videos go from less involved to more involved, the materials one being the most involved. Um, so we're starting off with just an empty scene here and um, to make our scene we're going to put some objects into it. The first thing we want to have in a scene like this one is a ground plane. So the ground plane is just a, a plane we just created up here by uh, clicking on this button and what we're going to do is we're just going to scale this plane up. So we're going to come over here to our channel box and select these three um, properties here for scale and we're going to scale that up to 25. That makes our um, plane get nice and big like this and that means that we've got kind of a ground to see when we um, render the scene. Um, you can see it's divided into um, 10 by 10 so we're going to fix that as well. We're going to come down to polyplane here and just change both of these to one and that way we'll just have one big plane. One other thing we can do here, um, just to give ourselves a little bit more to work with in our scene, is we can bring these uh, edges at the side here up. So we'll go into Edge Select Mode, bring both, select both of those edges there, and then using your W key, hold down Shift and extrude those edges up. So now we've got a kind of a, a box with a background on it that we can um, start to put things in. So now we need objects to put in here. In the past we've uh, used things like a, a ball or something like that in our scene but we can do a bit better than that um, after the previous week's work where we modelled an object. We can bring in that object. So um, often you'll find that you've got things in other files that you want to bring into a file. So we can go up to the file menu here and select import and then we can choose uh, another Maya file. So I'm going to choose the one that I saved my dog into and when I click uh, OK on that you can see it imports the contents of that file into here, including these reference images. So the, I want to get rid of those reference images. I'll click on my layer over here and then right click on it and click delete layer. And then I will select both of these dog images over here in the outliner. Remember you can click this button here to toggle the outliner on and off. I'm going to click both of these in the outliner and then just my delete key on my keyboard to delete them. And finally, just to make my life a bit easier, I'm going to name a couple of these. I'm going to call this one Room. I'm going to call this one Dog. I'm also going to move my dog um, up so that he's standing on the floor rather than sunk half into it. So I'm going to press my, my space bar and I'm just going to use this side view here and bring the dog up just so that his feet are roughly on the bottom there. Okay, so there's my um, basic scene setup with a single dog. Now, um, what we're going to be doing in this exercise is we're going to be applying a number of different materials to different, um, to, to different objects. So we're going to need more than one object. And for this particular tutorial, we want four objects. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate my dog. And I'm just going to move these duplicates out a little bit. Like this. Okay, so Control D each time. And I'm just going to move them into kind of an interesting configuration. So maybe just to make it a bit more interesting, I'm just going to grab these guys and give them a, a little bit of rotation here. And maybe just bring them around a little bit. Spread them out. And uh, maybe this one here can be rotated a bit this way. Okay. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just playing around with their positionings. Okay, so that gives me my um, dogs in, in a scene. Now, <clears throat> at this point, um, I can move my perspective camera around using, um, using my um, Alt key and middle mouse button and left mouse button to rotate and my um, my scroll wheel to zoom. So I could compose a nice composition through here if I wanted to. But often you want to have a little bit more control than you can get through the perspective uh, view here. And it can be quite useful to actually have an object in your scene which acts as a camera, especially when we come to animate a bit later. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a camera to our scene. 
To add a camera to your scene, just go up to your Create menu over here and you'll see that there is under here um, a Cameras option. You see there are three different cameras, Camera, Camera and Aim, Camera, Aim and Up. I'm not going to go into the detail of each of these. Suffice it to say that if you create a camera, you just get a camera, um, which you can place in the world. But if you do Camera and Aim, not only do you get a camera in your scene, but you also get another object that's connected to your camera, which you can use to aim your camera, which is really useful. So we'll add that one in there and you can see that in our um, in our outliner over here you can see it's added camera one group and in that group there are two objects. There's a camera and a camera aim. Let's have a zoom in on this and um, just so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, maybe we'll zoom in down here. So you can see our camera object is this purple thing here. I'm just going to grab that and uh, grab that whole lot. I'm just going to move it down a little bit so we can see it a bit more easily. Um, and you can see there that our camera looks like a little camera and then it's attached via a line to this uh, thing at the end here which is the uh, look at point or the camera aim point. The camera aim is really useful because the camera aim um, is something that um, the camera will always rotate to look at. So you'll notice that as I move that camera aim up and down, that camera moves up and down to always be pointing at that aim point. And that's really useful because it means that when we put our camera into the scene and decide we want to put our camera in a particular place, we can then turn or rotate or orient the camera to look at a particular thing just by placing this aim point. Without that, we would still be in a quite a fiddly world of just moving our camera around. So um, what we need to do here is we'll, we'll just um, move our camera back up into the world and we'll move our camera back and we'll move our aim point up a bit and maybe we'll put our aim point um, actually on one of these dogs here. Okay, so that way the camera will be pointing at that dog. Now if we want to see what that camera looks like, uh, we want to see a view through that camera, we can go up here to the view menu and we can cycle through cameras. And when we do that, you'll see that it'll snap us. It says down here now we're looking at camera one rather than the perspective view. Now at this point, if I want to change this view, so this isn't great at the moment because I can only see one of the dogs here. So if I want to change this view, I can just come in here and I can just move my camera around. So as I move my camera back or to the side and up, you can see it's just changing that perspective there to see that I'm framing the shot. Now, the important thing here is that um, the camera is always looking at that dog because of that look at point. If I decide I want my camera to look at something else, I just need to select that camera aim and just move it somewhere. So between moving the camera and changing the aim, I can really create any kind of composition that I want. Now I can still rotate my view over here and when I do that, the actual camera object will move to match that view that I've rotated to. And if I zoom in, you can see that my camera over here is getting closer and further away from that lookout point, from that aim point. So uh, that's two ways to compose your scene. You can still use your normal movement tools, but you can also um, grab the camera manually here. Okay, so move um, your, your view around until you've got a scene that you kind of like. I, I'd like this uh, dog here to be a little bit further across, so um, I'm just going to um, move him in like this, um, and maybe this one here could be a bit closer, maybe this guy could be a bit closer too, I don't know. Just trying to get a scene that I, I kind of like the look of. Okay, so once I've got my scene kind of looking right, I'm ready to start um, adding in my light sources. And uh, that will be the subject of the next video.